food. It's either it's either your body trying to evacuate some kind of food or some kind of toxin that it interprets as a toxin, or it could be malabsorption of minerals. Uh, that'll do it too. What else, what were you going to say? Uh, I want to say um, I've changed my diet like over a period of time to test out the food. Like I haven't stayed with one particular food. I've changed my diet, and you I, can't figure it out. Is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, here's what you do. Stop eating for two days or three days. Stop eating as long as you can. Two or three days would be great if you can do that. Use the Swear of V. Uh, if you want to, why don't you order the Swear of V off of, um, I'll go to brightsideven.com, pull down on the shopping cart, order the Swear of V. If you can do the gold, that's the best. And when it comes in, do a three-day fast or a two-day fast. Only do Swear of V and watch what happens. Chances are your liquid bowel movements should subside. If they don't subside, then don't even do the Swear of V. But chances are they should subside. Then reintroduce foods. This is how you do an elimination diet uh, for an emergency condition, which it sounds like you're dealing with. And I would interpret this as an emergency if it's been this long. So uh, stop eating. Then reintroduce foods after a couple of days and start with your favorite foods and watch what happens and try to eat just one kind of food all day. All right, so if you love cheese, just eat cheese all day. That tends to be constipating, so that's probably not going to be it. But whatever it is, eat just one kind of food all day long and see what happens. If you're fine with that food, then uh, you can cross that off the list and go to the next food. You follow me? Does that make sense, Isaac? Chances yeah. are, though, you're going to find what you're eating a lot of is the problem. But it, is, it could be a malabsorption issue also. If that's the case, if it's not a food allergy or food intoxin, it's just malabsorption, then you're going to want to start working with absorption strategies. Chief among them is apple cider vinegar and digestive enzymes and the biolumin nightly essence. So if you don't want to go with the, do, do the first thing that I just talked about where you stop eating and then introduce foods, get yourself on the biolumin nightly essence right away. And that might make a difference as well. Sometimes uh, if you don't have the right pr proportions or amount of bacteria in your gut, that can cause diarrhea too. Your stools are made up of, uh, of bacteria. So if you don't have enough bacteria or something's wrong with the bacteria, that can affect the stools also. So you got to make sure you have your microbiome, your bacteria, gut flora are operating correctly and there's the right amount and right proportions. Bioluminitely essence will help there too. Same with fermented cabbage or fermented beets or fermented foods in general. So if you don't want to do the elimination or the, the fasting and then reintroducing foods, try uh, bioluminitely essence and uh, apple cider vinegar and all the absorption strategies that we talk about. Okay, it could be a liver issue, you're not making enough bile. There's no way to know until you start to do some experimenting. Before I went to do all that, I remember yesterday you also said to try soluble fiber. Yes. I haven't tried soluble fiber long enough, so maybe... That might help, that's but that's more... Idea. That might help, but that's not, that's not going to cure the problem. That might take care of the symptom, but the problem is still there. It sounds like a malabsorption issue. Soluble fiber may help a little bit, um, but you might want to do the other things we talked about earlier. And you can buy soluble fiber anywhere. Uh, you can, eat, you can eat, get it in vegetables, but you can also buy uh, soluble fiber at a health food store and just put it into water and drink it, and that might be something that you want to consider doing too. Okay, Isaac? Okay, just one more question. Sure. I mean, um, sure. Uh, Lately, for a long time, like, I feel tired, like, chronic. It's all part of it. You're not absorbing, dude. You're not absorbing nutrients. You're starving to death, Isaac. I, I don't know how much more clear I could be or firm I could be. Do you understand the significance of this? You are starving to death. You're getting calories, perhaps, but you're not getting nutrients. When you have loose bowel movements for 20 years, that means nutrients are being flushed out of your body. You're, you're starving. Of course you're going to be tired, and it's going to get worse. You sound like a young guy, but you know what, dude? It's going to get worse and you're running higher risk for all kinds of hideous things. You follow me, Isaac? Are you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. So that's what it is. So you're not going to, you know, I can't, you can't treat the tiredness or the symptoms without treating the digestive system first. You're not getting nutrients. That means you're literally starving. Okay. You see how important this is? Yes, um, I'll, I'll follow that advice and, and see what happens. It's very important. This is not anything to be toyed around with. You sound like a young guy, but it's going to get worse. All right, would you stay in touch with me? You can either email me or call us on the radio program. I'd love to hear how you're doing. Yeah, I'll follow up with you afterwards when I um, get this down. Thank down. you. Yeah, stay in touch. Stay in touch. You can always send me emails at ben at ksco.com. Put Isaac from New York in the subject heading. God bless you, bro. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for your you. call. All right, uh, let's see. Diane in Texas, what's going on? How you doing? Thank you for taking my call. Sure. I have a 15-year-old daughter who was diagnosed with hypothyroidism at 4. Okay. She, um, That's significant. That's very, very is. significant. She, Hypothyroidism is a sign of a body in distress. Nothing more, nothing less. 
Okay? Don't, it's not, a, it had not an iodine deficiency, although that can contribute. It's not some weirdness about the thyroid, you know, some weird genetic malady. It's a sign of a body in distress. Chances are it involves the digestive system. Chances are pretty good. Did she have food allergies or food intolerances as a baby? She had every food intolerance. I didn't even feed okay. her solid food till she was one. Do you think I just rolled off the turnip truck and got on a radio show and started talking about this stuff? I've been seeing it for decades. And your boneheaded doctors should be addressing the digestive system, not diagnosing her with hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is nothing more than the manifestation of a stressed out biological system. That's what it is. It can involve autoimmunity, it can involve digestive problems, but it's the sign of a body in distress. Now, Diane, when your baby was crying, right, when she was an infant, when she was crying, what did you do? You went and you nurtured her. You loved her. You pet her. You find out what was wrong with her. Well, guess what? Our bodies and your your baby, your, your 15-year-old's body is her baby. It's like a baby. So what do you do when your baby's crying, when your baby's in distress, when your baby is, is suffering something somehow? You calm the baby down. You look for what's causing the problem with the baby. You follow me? Right. So something is causing your body, your your little girl's, or your your teenage girl's body to cry out. It's cr hypothyroidism is like your body going, "Help me, help me, please." And so what do we do? We say, "Shut up! I don't want to hear from you." That's what a prescription drug is. Or even worse, we're just going to cut your tongue out, baby. That's called removing the thyroid or radiating the thyroid, which uh, you know they're not going to do it for your, for uh, for di for your kid because it's hypothyroidism. But chances are they're going to give her uh, a synthroid, or s if they're not already giving her synthroid, right? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. of course. You know, that's just more nonsense. Diane, this is so important because after hypothyroidism follows every single horrible thing that can happen to a human being. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, after hypothyroidism. All right. After hypothyroidism follows, and I don't mean to, to be negative here, but you need to hear this. After hypothyroidism follows lupus, follows autoimmune diseases of all kind, follows cancer. Uh, uh, after hypothyroidism, you get heart disease, you get cancer, you get uh, everything horrible about being alive follows hypothyroidism. And so what do you do? You, re you reduce the stress, the strain, the duress on the body. Start with deep breathing. Have her sit on the couch and practice deep breathing. Stat. That's pharmacy talk for immediately, right away. Do it today. Secondly, stabilize the blood sugar. Uh, it's very important. Get on the sweeties. Stop eating the foods that spike the blood sugar. Make sure she's on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely focus on digestive health. Use the BioLumin Nightly Essence. Eliminate problem foods. She's probably got a, a long-standing digestive issue that has not been corrected. Diane, i got to move, but if you want to contact me, send me an email, ben at ksco.com. Put your phone number in there, and I'll, I'll, I'll help you out personally. Okay, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. I'm sorry if we left you on hold. I tried to get to everybody today. Uh, that's why we got to get you on as early as possible when you call in on the bright side. All right, hope to see you in Olean, New York, Tuesday, the 21st of October. We'll continue talking about zinc and prostaglandins and zinc deficiencies, and, uh, and, and then we'll get into some vitamin C stuff on our next bright side episode. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a spectacular, wonderful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.